Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Flames. The Flames fall 2-1 to one to the Montreal Canadiens in an emotional Sean Monaghan homecoming, and Jacob Markstrom looked like a deer in the headlights and like he didn't know what he was doing, and I think it's time we talk about that on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me today on this cold, dreary Friday. We're already in December. Hard to believe that this year is wrapping up. And, well, you know, the Flames had some problems wrapping up the game last night, and they drop another two points and an emotional homecoming to Sean Monaghan. And Jacob Markstrom looked horrendous. Um, I don't even... I, we can't talk about that yet. And of course, we're going to talk about the flames of the game, Tyler Toffoli's efforts, as well as Mikel Backlund's. But before we jump into that, please remember to subscribe to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure uh, you're subscribed to us on YouTube as well, as it is free 99 everywhere. So last night, the flames did drop another two points to the... <laughs> Montreal Canadiens, and oh boy, 13 seconds into this thing, Jacob Markstrom is in the neutral zone. He's halfway up the ice. He leaves the crease to play the puck, which is never a good sign. You know Markey is going through something when he is playing out of the crease. We've talked about this. We talked about this a lot last year, especially with James Johnson of the win win column, and he, he ended up in the neutral zone. He went slip and slide. And he, oh my gosh. So 13 seconds into this, Slavkovsky, uh scores a goal. And that's Monahan's first assist of the night. And let's take a look at um, Game Center from NHL because we we need to dissect some of this. We need, we need to talk. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you will see me sharing my screen. And if not... Well, you get to tune in audio, uh, audio through audio. But last night, the Flames outshot the Canadians 46 to 19. That is impressive, but also the fact that you could only score one goal out of the, all those chances is quite concerning. Zero for four on the power play. Mangiapani was in the penalty box quite a lot last night. And you know what? The Canadians had 23 blocks. So maybe it does make a little sense why you weren't able to get <laughs> to score a few goals there. But overall, this the main concern here is the power play, the special teams. We need to take a look at that. And, you know, a few weeks ago, months ago now at this point, the Flames had a practice dedicated to special teams. And I, like... I sat there watching this this power play be run through again and again and again, and I'm sitting there thinking, do they practice special teams at practice? What do you do? Because there's simply no way this team is going to win without being able to score on a power play. You know, the penalty kill is successful. It was successful. Um, they only allowed one power play goal last night out of three. So, you know what? They It was overwhelmingly successful. And for them to sit there and then not score anything on the power play is humiliating. And I'm sure that Daryl Sutter went back there and had a nice conversation with his team. I'm sure he did. And then, you know, your only goal comes from Elias Lindholm, on a nice pass from Jonathan Huberdeau, but it also leaves you wondering, why couldn't there be more of that last night? Where, you know, the shots weren't missing, clearly. Did you get goalied? Did you get goalied? 
You might have. I, I think you did because Jake Allen um, saved 45 shots, and that is just not great. And it, it's concerning, again, especially for a team that is young, that is still rebuilding. And, uh, you know, obviously you can't win them all, can't lose them all. But I expect better when it comes to to the Flames. And Tyler Toffoli had one of the best games I've seen from him. And no, he didn't score a goal, but he had seven shots on net. And that is so impressive. He led the team with that. And then Mikel Backlund and Nazem Kadri had five apiece. And clearly it's not the shooting, the puck, that's the issue. All I, I want to say a majority of Toffoli's shots were high danger chances or at least quality shots. And I... They just didn't look good. They didn't look good, Okay. What is going on with special teams? And, you know, I don't know what Daryl is thinking, what the special teams coach is thinking, but do we need to shake things up? Do we need to just maybe not do what we're doing? I I, I don't know. I don't know how, I, you know what? I'm very sure that Daryl Sutter has them practicing today and it will be a wonderfully smooth practice with plenty of power play practice. But coming up next, we are going to talk about, talk more about the power play, some high danger chances, some even strength stats from Natural Stat Trick. But before we do that, I do want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. And Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs. Uh, BetOnline.net has the latest and greatest odds and trends for every every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts and are looking to throw another one in the mix, of course, head on over to Bet Online as well. They have them there. You can get. You can listen to other people talk about sports, and not just us here at Locked On. And they are the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. And remember to gamble responsibly as you head over to betonline.net. BetOnline, where the game starts. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Locked On Flames. It's Friday. We made it through another week, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you tuning in and making me part of your day. I I remember at the start of the season, there were some problems and some concerns when it came to the top line and how they were unable to score a an even strength goal. And, and now I feel like everything has done like a 180 from that. I feel like we're looking at this team – and we're saying, wow, they they look fantastic at five, uh, you know, at even strength. They were generating really strong chances. And I took a look at Natural Stat Trick this morning, and they had 14 high danger chances at even strength and four on the power play. And, and honestly, I'm not even going to lie. I'm, I'm shocked that they could even register shots on the power play. Well, no, because that's literally one one shot per power play. And you have two minutes on each power play. That is actually really concerning. That That's not good at all. And they struggled at even strength, like I said, to start the season. And now it's just a 180. Right now, it feels like we get this glimmer of hope to see how well they're doing and to be like, okay, like this is it. They're turning the corner. They're going to do it. Okay. They're going to string a couple wins together. And then a confidence, a blow to the confidence game comes through and goes and squashes those chances. And obviously I understand that you can't win them all. You're not going to win them all. You're not going to lose them all either. So what on earth are we going to do in order to tar- turn this corner. Right now, they are f- in fifth place in the Pacific. 
that is not where I thought this team would be at this point in the year. I remember right after they had traded Kachuk and we saw the return, everyone said, okay, this is going to be Edmonton's and Calgary's division. They are going to be battling for it. They are going to be fighting till the end for that top spot. And unfortunately, that's just not the case right now. And, you know, obviously slow and steady wins the race. You don't want to burn your team out and uh, start risking injuries and whatnot. But I just, I don't really think the Flames fans need to start worrying, especially because, you know, they're three points out of a wild card spot, like I said. And I just, ugh. It's not, it's time to turn up the heat a little bit and start realizing, okay, like what's going on and, you know, kind of lean into the, is our $6 million starter capable of starting every night? Because I don't, I am not okay with how that performance went. I don't like how that performance went last night from Markstrom. And yeah, while the offense needs to be better, you also have to look at your goaltending because both of the goals that Markstrom allowed were silly goals, especially that first one. And he even said himself, he's like, I, one of the first things he said in his uh, post-game press conference was, yeah, I really suck at hockey right now. At least he's self-aware. That's, you know, always a good start to things. But, ugh, it just was not a good game. And it was hard to watch. I thought that they would have at least tied it up in the third period and gone to overtime. I thought that they they had a few really good shots to do that, but it was not um, it was not the Flames' night. <laughs> it was not the Flames' night, and that's okay. It happens, but I do. I do want to see less of that and more of a strategic way to win a hockey game. And I would love for that to happen tomorrow against the ever aging Washington Capitals. And I already know, I already know that we're going to see an Ovechkin po uh, power play goal from where he always shoots right at the dot no one's covering him and we're all gonna be like oh how did that happen and it's like we do this every single time someone posts a spreadsheet or the spray chart rather of his power play goals what do you mean how did this happen I'm again I'm not a genius but the Washington Capitals are an aging team they are pretty plagued with injuries I know Tom Wilson's still out but they're not as plagued by injury as the Flyers. So we will have to keep an eye on that. Maybe we'll do a pregame show in the morning. Or I guess in the afternoon since the game isn't until 8 p.m. Mountain Time. But again, don't, don't count the flames out yet. It, it's too early to do that. I think we've, we've still got at least another six, seven weeks where we can kind of ride this wave and be like, okay. Are we, are we going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you not? And then just kind of exhale there. But coming up next, I am going to anoint my flame of flames of the game because I think more than one of them deserve some recognition here on Locked on Flames. And thank you for tuning in to Locked on Flames. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto and make sure you're following along on Twitter with uh, the Flames show at LO underscore Flames pod. I always, always, always like to see who's going to be my flame of the game. I like to like pick someone out in my head before game and be like, this is who, like, this is who it's going to be. And I'm usually wrong, not in like a, oh my God, like they play horribly, but in a way that's like, someone played better than them. And my cat agrees. And he he is the star of the show. He is the star of every show. He is the flame of every game. <laughs> but last night, I, I it's not that I didn't have to fully going into it. I just I thought that it was gonna be another Manjiapani night. 
I did. And for Tyler Toffoli to come in last night and have seven shots on goal and the performance that he gave was very uh, similar to someone who is fighting for a permanent roster spot. He was all over the ice. He was everywhere when you needed him to be. And I am truly shocked that he didn't score a goal. He didn't. And I would, I would have bet money based on the first period and how he performed that he would have had a goal, but it doesn't always work like that. I, I thought that he played very well defensively. There was a minute where he went down though, and I was thoroughly concerned. I thought that um, he just went down hard. I don't even remember, like, I don't even think it was a hit. I think he got kind of like caught up in someone's stick. So really probably should have been a penalty and, or like bumped into the boards and he went down funny. And I was like, oh no. Okay. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, hi, my cat is here to join us. And um, yeah, so again, Tyler Toffoli, I think gets like the number one flame of the game, as well as Huberdo. Jonathan Huberdo might have only had one shot on goal, but he did have that assist on the Elias Lindholm goal as well. But I do think that he played very, a very strong two-way game, and that's what the Flames need. The Flames are going to have to step up their defensive game uh, all around the ice. But especially with the forwards, you know, I love to see Huberdo play that 200-foot game. I love seeing what he brings to the team. But last night, I was thoroughly impressed, and he was hungry. Uh, like, he was in front of the net. He had a strong net front presence through most of the evening as well, which I liked. Um, no one's going to do it like Gaudreau, but, you know, <laughs> I'll settle for Huberdo. <laughs> And I do think that uh, Nazem Kadri as well, he had another strong night on the Dubé, Manjupani, and obviously Kadri line. I loved to see him, again, well, all over the ice. The thing with these three players is they were all over the ice. They were like flies at a picnic everywhere, everywhere. And I, I loved the hustle. I loved the urgency. That is something that I think the team had been missing for a little bit. It, they put their foot on the gas and they didn't take it off. And this was a very winnable game. It was winnable. Had someone else been in net, it was winnable. <laughs> the flames would have done the thing where they come back from behind, which feels like they never do anymore. But I was thoroughly impressed with all three of their performances. Kadri is due for a goal Maybe he'll have one against Washington tomorrow. I don't know. I want to see more. I want to see more from more of what we saw last night from these players in tomorrow night's game against the Capitals. Again, two older teams going up against each other. It's going to be a fun one. And as always, thank you for hanging out with me here on Locked on Flames. And you can absolutely... Uh, Catch this show on YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, wherever you want to listen to your podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well. And today we are representing the Boston Pride here. Uh, it is a great time to get into the PHF. You can watch on TSN and um, this weekend. There's some great games. So I will see you all uh, either tomorrow with a little pregame recap, a pregame recap, a recap, pregame preview, and of course, a, um, a podcast on Monday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay warm, and be smart. Go Flames!